Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just, just wait. Live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 584. Tuesdays, we've been doing this, talking about professionalized wrestling of a sort for over 11 years here on the podcast, Airwaves. I'm Matt Sorgatron on the Twitter, uh, Mayhem or uh, Head Mayhemmer, I guess. No? Yeah. No, let's let's be honest. Producer Father Missy May- is the real Father mayhem. mayhem. Father Mayhem is that what's happening here? Godfather Mayhem. Godfather Mayhem. Mayhem. Yeah. yeah. Maddie Stream Matt has joined us. We pulled up a, an extra chair for him. Nice. What's up, Sorg? I got a question. No, you know what, Chad? Well, the we Shad. need to introduce everybody. No, no, just can't wait. We can't wait. <laughs> wait, what's happening? You're you're messing my flow up. Chad the Shad and I have a very important message for everyone. Oh, hold on a second. Let me grab a photograph that I sent right, you. All right, we got a, a photograph ago. here. Um, I have a question for uh, this uh, this fella that we saw in the. Um, uh, yeah, he was on my screen all weekend long. He's wearing that bright orange obnoxious jersey there on the corner. He was on every WWE every show all weekend. One. And Chad the Shad and I have a very important question for him. Um, have you ever seen the Flyers win the cup? Mm-hmm. Oh, snap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 15,000 something something days. Well, your team doesn't win the cup. You know, maybe you got a little more disposable income to buy those expensive tickets to right, go right in the front row and you know, right. show all weekend. Off. Mm-hmm. Oof, we're too busy. <laughs> all weekend. Who are these people? Do they have jobs? No. What do they do with themselves? No. Yeah. Our arms are too heavy from lifting cups. We can't do that. That is true. <laughs> too busy we're... attending parades. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Riz is so here, too. gamer extraordinaire. The Riz joining us from Monroeville, the Hi, other so end of town. Good. Hello. Hi. He has a cough. I have a cough. That's all I'm right. all gobble legged. You're gobble legged. What the hell does that mean? I'm all gobble legged. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and also Chad the Shed already Hello. criticizing uh, Flyers fans. Yes. That and how does how can you? professionalize wrestling sort of it's for well you know it's for it's a it's a profession that people have jobs with let's say what what's definitely what actually professionalizes it the 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 the, t- the on the tv part mm-hmm. mm. solid yeah solid. i thought the maybe pros. a the video pros. a video screen and a bunch of people that do the thing that i smoke can't do machines. yes it's exactly <laughs> Exactly, and laser light show. Yeah, laser light show. You you professionalize yes. it once you yes, got that. Yes, so. absolutely. And Greg all Jones, Greg O joins us as well, a newbie. Hi everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the that's his real accent. <laughs> now you have to do that the whole show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will keep on doing it. <laughs> Greg, of course, uh, definitely fits in the geek genre with the rest of us. He, of course, part of the 501st Legion. What, what, are, the, what are you guys about over there? Um, well, I'm part of that. I'm also, I, I, I'm a man of many geek interests, that being just one of them, which, yeah, that involves dressing up in Star Wars costumes and doing charity work, and it, it's very near and dear to my heart. I do the same thing for the Rebel Legion, which is the good guys, 501st is the bad guys, and you can learn more about them. Uh, 501st.com, rebellegion.com. And, uh, but um, as for me, I cook food, I pet kitties, and I buy WWF Hasbro figures. And uh, I have a real problem with that. And uh, I'm hoping you can talk me out of it, but not too much. Oh, Hi, man. Greg. Hi, Greg. Greg. Hi, you, you and my seven year old need to get together with the action figures. All right. Well, these aren't for playing with. No, 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 no. Oh, these well, are, if these you've are ever for wondered real. what they're like actually out of the packaging, then you shouldn't. You shouldn't <laughs> touch those figures, sir. What? At all. No. 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 Keep them in the package. Now, are you Keep buying like the, the new package. ones, like the Brock Lesnar, like kind of looks like Hasbro? Figures? Yeah, the yeah, they're retro style Mattel ones that which are basically 
Hasbro's Reborn. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't buy Roman Reigns because I just couldn't bring myself to pay ten bucks for Roman Reigns. Well, yeah, neither can anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I got Undertaker and Warrior just the other day, and oh, um, no. yeah, there's another set out that has Mankind and I think Austin and Rock and maybe a Triple H. They give Triple H the weird, the jumpy action like the like the Jimmy Snuka figure had back oh. in the day. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm not sure where they're going with that, but um, hmm, someone had to get it. We can't release this Snooka figure anymore. Ah, uh, just put Triple H's head on it and get it out the door. <laughs> Keep the same hair. Just, yeah, exactly. just <laughs> put a fresh coat of paint on it and get it out there. Yeah. Put a cross on it and 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 some Motorhead music, and we're good to go. Mm-hmm. Guys, this is Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please subscribe to us on the iTunes, Sister Speaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the YouTube and the Facebook page. You can join us on Facebook live every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Sometimes we'll take about a half an hour, and we'll talk about uh, why the local news sucks uh, or something else. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, it wasn't the local news. Well, it wasn't. Just, I mean, just the, you know, just the parts of it. Car, no, just the... <laughs> Not that, that 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 program is bad. Just no, no, like no. Just judging. Oh wait, you judging. guys just gave me an idea for a new fake news story. I gotta go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you can be a part of that if you join us here in the chat room or live at wrestlingmamshow Join the Facebook group for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. A lot of great conversations happen there. Mostly, usually, great conversations. Yeah, the majority. Uh, you can also drop us line four one two two zero six WMS zero on Twitter at Mayhem Show, as well as the email address. Good times. Good times, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. Thank you to our first streaming partner, the four hundred five Media dot com. That's carrying us on their network there, and uh, you can listen to us over there at every 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 night at nine p.m. Pacific time. Midnight Eastern time to catch up on your mayhem, or just leave the leave it on so the the sweet sounds of wrestling talk will put you to sleep uh, if you'd like. Also, thank you to our, our Patreons. Talk. What our talk our, put you to sleep. sleep. It wakens you up. It just yeah, it makes you want to run through walls, fight the shag, fight in dreams. Up bed every night. There you go. There you go. Don't fall. Also, thank you to our Patreon supporters, <laughs> patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Um, including our friend of or I'm sorry, fans of the show dollar level, uh, including Bo Diggity. Woo! <laughs> the slow woo today. Look at that. Woo. Our friend of ice cream, Ed Burke. The Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation from Podcast Betterment. Trey Guard, rakingtrayfabe.wordpress.com. Congratulations on your new job and move recently. Uh, Alexander Cars, Power to the Smarks. And uh, he, I got a note, he is also um, finishing recording his podcast tonight. So check it out. I believe that's the, um, um, oh, crap. Shakar in 15 minutes. That's the, <laughs> I try to remember all the words to it. Uh, I, I'm on this show. <laughs> and... And uh, though, go check that out uh, as well. And also, make sure I didn't break a feed. Um, at the Pocky Club five dollar level, thank you to our friend on the West Coast, Tina Keys, Brandon out there in uh, Kansas City, and Christopher Bishop. And at the brand new Pizza Club ten dollar level, he's going to get the uh, the the state of the shows and all kinds of stuff. Billy Effin Johnson, who was hanging out with us here in studio. There we go. Some applause for you. Brand new. It's all that first timer. Ten dollars yeah. a month. Thank you so much, everybody who's supporting the show, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Patreon. You guys are making the literally helping keep the lights on around here in our new studio, and we really do appreciate it. Um, and I'm catching up on all my notes. Guys, we have survived another four, five, six. Wait, wait, where were five, six? How many hours was it? It was a seven? No, there was four hour show, five, six hour show. Uh, with SummerSlam this weekend. Um, how did you did you do you guys enjoy SummerSlam? Was it a good SummerSlam for you? How are you, I, Matt? I didn't watch the whole thing. Oh, you didn't watch the so whole. So it was great. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! It, it, right. it was definitely a slam of the summer time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was solid. It was solid. It was solid. I enjoyed it. When 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 I think it's a bad show, it's a bad show. Wait, you thought it was a bad show? It wasn't good. 
But Strowman threw a chair. Strowman did throw yeah, a chair. Yeah, that's great. But also, <laughs> Rusev had a three-second match. That was well, weird. well, we can't have strong heels. <laughs> we, we can't be doing that. It, 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 just, it just seemed like a, a, a well-done Raw, but that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Oh, I, I've I I've been I've been harsh. supported of WWE for the last <laughs> how many months when everybody said it was bad. This was a not so good pay per view. Oh man, I I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I love that there was a lot going on. Um, I thought it was really interesting uh, did, uh, watching WWE doing their impression of an indie show at the beginning for the kickoff match. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's 10 people. I would have rather camp. seen one of those matches on the main show than the shark cage match. Would you, would you really have wanted to seen that six man tag as in, in, in place of the shark cage match? Maybe not the, no. maybe not the six man tag, but a title match would have been nice on there. You you didn't you didn't think that we had like a nice collection of matches here. Okay, like, you know, we we had kind of a short match with with Orton. Sure, but did you really want him to fill 20 minutes of your SummerSlam time? No. Not really. No. But Rusev, yes. But Rusev, yes. Rusev. Could. Like that that could have been good if, that could have been big for Rusev. Okay. But again, he gets nothing out of it. I, I don't think there's a strong enough build for him to have anything with that. No, they haven't really done much with him. Um, it, no, it's they a good point. Lose a flag match and then a horrible five second match where he just gets RKO'd once, and that was it. I did think the flag match was fun and interesting. The flag match was great. Matt flag match was interesting and pretty uh, weird to have a flag match, but it was all right. It was good. Uh, these are some good points from the chat room. Billy Johnson is saying it was a good show, but when there are twelve matches, they all can't be great. Mm-hmm. Um, Bobby says the Shark Cage match was terrible. Did you know both Cash and Big Show are big? Um, <laughs> and also, uh, I can't remember the last time in WWE Lube was used so prominently. Uh, so there's there's that situation. I, I I'm just kind of glad it didn't turn into all the Shark <clears throat> Cage matches we had last year, right? Where um, although I, I kind of wish they they mic'd him for commentary. Did they get a special on shark cages? Did they have to use these by a certain time? Yeah, I think so. Because they've just been like, put them in well, a shark cage. There's a toy set, there, you know, and there they, they got them. They got a mm. as as Mad Mike will say, we got to sling these toys. So they got you know, they got to move set. this product. So uh, you know, they everyone the else bought the elimination right, chamber. True. They got the toy set right before the NXT cage match or the NXT shark cage match, mm. which looked exactly like. The shark cage toy. This is a good point from Dave in the chat room. It says, with the smaller entrances, even on SummerSlam, are they now saving all the money for WrestleMania? Um, how did... It, we were kind of joking about this while we were watching it. Uh, NXT TakeOver, we'll, I think we'll touch a little bit further on that later, but um, had all the live bands and interesting entrances, and then SummerSlam didn't really, for the most part. We had our Shinsuke Nakamura entrance guy. Okay, but he's already hanging around New York, playing in parks and <laughs> they stuff. They just pulled so. that guy in off the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and, you know, so so how are we making Takeover feel like a bigger deal than we are SummerSlam? Is it is it really though? Because those are cheap. Hmm. A, a live band and a, and a choir or something. Is but it makes it feel relatively bigger. Relatively cheap in the. It makes it feel bigger. I mean, it was just Code yeah. Orange Sorg. I mean, it was just Code Orange apologies twice. To all the Code Orange yeah. fans. They were really good, by the way. They were. Uh, they were. But uh, it, no, you, I, I get your point. Like they don't yeah. make these. You know, I I can you know I, I understand like the non Big Four, pay per views not feeling like a big deal and them using the same old set for all of those. But when you get to SummerSlam and it's supposed to be a big deal, and you still just kind of get the same old presentation that you get with every other pay-per-view that's not WrestleMania, <clears throat> then yeah. you do kind of just leave their kids kind of going, you know, all it takes is a little bit extra to make this feel yeah. just a yeah. little bit more special. And really, I mean, I can live without the pyro, but the lack of the fog machines for Becky Lynch's entrance is the true sin that WWE <laughs> production has committed. <laughs> that is wrong. We need that. She needs that. That's the whole bit. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You can't be steampunk without the steam. Uh, That's right. Do you think the set had anything to do with them being there four days in a row? Hmm? Um, because they were there for 
Saturday, and then Sunday, and then Monday. Yeah, then but they they they're still they're the not whole, doing the anything whole of the set though. You think that was a production call where they don't, I don't have know. to I mean, they don't like, have to move anything. The they last few years, there's been a little bit more of a and, difference between the NXT set and the yeah and the SummerSlam set, and this year was I mean, it, it seemed to be almost identical. It does with their production cutting money. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, do you think somebody made the call? Was like, hey, we build it once, we don't move it for you. Don't have to four days. You don't have to bring in a crew to rearrange it or there's anything like one that. One tear down and one yep. setup. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I every- mean, there's ways to spruce it up here and there in between mm-hmm. for some entrances, but as a main set, maybe that was a uh, a call that was made that since they were going to be there for. Consecutive That's a good point. Days. You know, you, you talk about how Becky Becky Lynch doesn't get her fog anymore. Mm-hmm. But uh Finn Balor got fog. But yeah, he got he Bobby, got um, Bobby, dry ice. He did not yeah. get the the steam firing. Yeah, the the, the classic true. Edge rated R superstar vintage <laughs> fog blowing right. steam machine. Uh, yeah. uh, Tina's saying that they reached their fog limit for Bobby Roode and Alistair Black on Takeover. Oh, Alistair Black, that damn entrance. That was great. That was amazing. I not I, just I got to pause. I just want to say one more time. Alistair Black's entrance was freaking awesome. That dude is like, I I can't. It's 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 the true definition of intangible. He's walking out. He looks like he doesn't give a crap that the band's playing in front of him. And I'm just watching. It's like this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. I want to see this guy spin kicking the heads off everyone like right now. And uh, even Mike, Matt Mike saying that that uh, NXT had the best use of live bands in a in a good while. And I think that's true. I mean, you think you look at SummerSlam, there was no celebrities. Mm-mm. There was no, I mean, you know, we've had, you know, we're, what have our celebrities been like John Stewart and, um, and, um, and John the guy Stewart. from Arrow, the John guy Stewart. from Arrow. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Stephen Amell. Thank you, Stephen Amell. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and they're just, if this, this is them wanting to make SummerSlam kind of the WrestleMania of the other half of the year. Yeah, we'll then the match count alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, match count alone, and that, and, and the four day stand, and um, and, and everything. Uh, I don't think they succeeded in that point. It felt like they're just like, hey, this is one of the four times where both the brands get together. Yay! I mean, it doesn't take much to like make it feel just a little bit more special because you see them do it on the takeovers all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, you get a few models to walk out. Bobby Roode to the ring and it feels like a bigger deal, you know, or you get like, yeah, you get the band to, to, to play one of the songs and it feels like a bigger deal. It's amazing how, how, how much more NXT seems to get out of just, just doing just a little bit more, but yeah. you get to the main show and it's just like, you know, so, dot, dot, dot. do you think they have to push them better than the main roster or more to concentrate on getting them noticed? So that they can make it to the main roster. I, I think there was like as far as the takeover show. I think there was. Uh, at least I got a sense after watching it that they threw. That I mean, going in it was kind of like a little bit underwhelming. Going in, obviously, it turned out awesome. But they threw everything they had at that show. Mm-hmm. I mean, they mm-hmm. had like they're trotting out graves and Jr. just for pop after pop, and they're the band is playing. I mean, they never gave that crowd a chance to, mm-hmm. to, to cool crowd, off at all. Crowd was with it all night too. And they went with it the whole way and they threw and everything single match was just all out. It's also a two and a half hour show. Now granted there's, there's recordings about before and everything too, that we'll see on the, on the upcoming weeks of, of NXT. And I know Mad Mike was there in attendance for that as well. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, it is, it is only two and a half hours. And I had the same thing. It just felt very underwhelming. I, I, I was going, saying going into this, we were doing uh, IWC's Cage Fury that night for recording. And I always worried because they've been up against NXT now three years in a row. And I was like, well, you're kind of hitting the same audience, right? And this was the first year where I looked at what IWC was putting together with Cage Fury, which was a fantastic show. Just finished, finished editing it today. But going into it, it looked like a good, fun show that you are going to get your money's worth. Versus NXT talk, Takeover, which the lead up has been like, eh, I guess, mm-hmm. and it yeah. just delivers, and and you know we keep going back to ah, NXT will be all right, you know, and then we we saw what happened with Adam Cole, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we we named last week's show the Adam Cole Factor, and we definitely saw it, right? Yeah, you know mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. the um I don't know, can we just call him the 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 Honor Club or something? 
with uh, uh, Adam Cole and Bobby Fish and, and Kyle O'Reilly at we, this point. We had a good name uh, where I was watching it. We came up with, they need to form a faction called the Honor Society. Oh, that's good. Oh, and then right there. they're yeah. just <laughs> keeping the WWE honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, by Mike- respecting everybody. And then Punk shows up and yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all these, everything, all these the old art, they just stand up like, and you're just like, oh boy. Because isn't it rumored that they're flirting with this ROH invasion <laughs> angle on NXT? Man, man Mike says, oh, uh, ROH versus Impact invasion, oh, yes. co-invasion angle now. Yes. Um, uh, my, Mike's got a lot to say on this one. Roger Strong needs to be part of that fucking group yesterday. Uh, yeah, he needs something. They weren't right? here yesterday. They so. weren't here yesterday, and he, and he wasn't on the show. So um, he says, "I'll never say takeover is going to be the this takeover is going to be the bad one ever again." Like seriously, if anybody ever hears that before next takeover, slap me in the face. <laughs> the worst takeover is not a bad show. No, in the history yeah. of NXT takeovers or arrivals or whatever they are, right? This did fly in under the radar as like a oh, this is going to be an okay show, but it's not going to be a takeover that I'm going <laughs> to rant and rave over. Yeah, well, it's been and about... Then it's, I watched it and was like, oh, you know what? That's it's really been show. about managing expectations for them for the last three or four takeover specials that I can remember where you're going into it going, yeah, I don't know about this one. And they drop like, you know, like one of the tag matches yeah. that they've had that just blew the roof off the place they and, and they're having these amazing um, just matches. Yeah. So <laughs> they just, they they... You know, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's it's one of the best bets you can got going. Gargano versus Andrade. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board with Andrade. Um, and Tina, as I was about to get to, is mentioning there's uh, there are uh, nine former Ring of Honor champs in WWE currently. Yeah, I mean, it was a show. I mean, mm-hmm. they mentioned Ring of Honor by name. They have a working relationship with. Ring of Honor, having used footage and interviewed people uh, for recent projects, you know, on top of their their and and I think I was watching the tweets from Justin Labar during the Triple H call, and he was talking about coordination with like groups like that, like like Evolve, like uh, presumably Ring of Honor, and saying, yeah, anybody that wants a working relationship, you know, we're kind of interested. So I don't know if that kind of opens the floodgates for. Hey WWE, do you want us to farm you count? Here's some guys, you know, and then you feel like that's kind of happening when you're looking how many people come from certain things like an IWC and and they're on Raw or in WWE like a few months later, right? Yeah, um, and more so with the Ring of Honor and 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 NXTs and things, you know, it, it, probably less so Impact Wrestling, uh, but <laughs> but they, they but yeah. still they're 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 going right, and they're keeping a main source of potential competition under control mm-hmm. that's good business too right yeah i mean but you, you can't call ring of honor competition you can't call impact competition at this point like lucha underground they're just something else right right they're the ecw to wwf of mm-hmm. the 90s and that's 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 really is better than everything you know and plus yeah. seeing you know indie wrestling doing as well as it has been doing it's a source of future talent Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's what it's a mm-hmm. not it's not a revenue stream, but you're treating it as a talent stream. It's mm-hmm. a future stream, yeah. It, I mean, it, just it, like just like you you'd like to get as many revenue streams in your company as possible through various different outlets, you know, merchandise, all that, licensing, all that stuff. You do that stuff with your talent. It looks like that's the approach that they're taking is well, you know, we can get a little bit of stream from ROH, we can pick up, mm-hmm. you know, we're mm-hmm. getting some girls from Shimmer for the women's tournament. Right, a lot of Shimmer you know, footage and that bracketology. Yeah, and they're just their their talent I, revenues that they can, which I believe is a Dave Prezak property, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. So, and you know what? I mean, talent's never the issue with WWE. It's what they're doing with the talent, and whether it's satisfying yeah. art, the rest of us. But um, shouldn't we talk about that main event at SummerSlam just a little bit? Uh, okay, the the that four the four gigantic. Match. Deli counter of <laughs> violence that we had. It was just unbelievable. <laughs> it, it was, was unbelievable. You know, I sat back at one point when tables were being flipped oh. and, and smashed through, and I was like, oh, look at all the beef flying. Matt has to be having a good time right now. I was like, well, I mean, I've talked about it, I think, leading up to this, that 
I was hoping that that this was that the four way was the way they were going to go, and just the potential for just mayhem was off the charts, and it blew me away. Like the first like ten minutes of that match, everything up to the point where Brock gets carted out is just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. and, and everything, it's just so hot, and the they're flying all over the place, and Joe's like hitting Roman when he's barely looking, and Braun's doing his thing, and. Braun's throwing dart and people with office chairs. <laughs> Braun with that office chair, man. It doesn't move. That's his sledgehammer. It's like a the office chair is Braun's sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> He's just killing people with it. He releases it, and that chair doesn't move. Like, you don't, there's no swivel in it. No, it's yeah. dead it's aim. It's on that nice plane. Dead aim. Something about the aerodynamics is just right. Straight through the tire. Straight through the tire every and time. And it's just like, I'm just, even like listening to the announce team, too, like Graves and Booker. I mean, it, to a lesser extent, Cole. I mean, he's a little bit more reserved. But those two are like losing their mind during the beginning of the match. Booker's just like, like, just like, why? Yeah, <laughs> Shucky just, Ducky. Just, I don't even think he got a Shucky Ducky. Match. It was, it he was, was just m- like making noises. Mayhem. It was. It was incredible. I knew. It, I knew it was going to be <laughs> great as soon as they started announcing, like when they started the introductions. And they're saying, weighing 285 pounds. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> and they're like, Strowman, 320 pounds. I'm like, oh, my God, that dude is massive. And it's then, like, and, and I've heard people talking about this. Like, we went through this. Obviously, we went through a long period where it was all about these, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the work rate guys, you know, the, the light heavyweights, the cruiserweight types who could go a mile a minute and they could do all these technical moves and things like that. And we've had that for so long, years and years and years of, you know, Punk and Brian and all these other guys um, who've been showing that style that we've kind of like, I don't want to say we've been desensitized to it a little bit because, you know, good wrestling is still good wrestling. But the spectacle of the giant human beings beating the snot out of each other is something that we don't really get very often. So when you finally get it again, you're just like, you know, it becomes such a thing. The spectacle is just incredible. I like me some hoss fights. I love the meat. Mm-hmm. Meat sorg. Meat. So, something, you know, something big and something extraordinary, right? Are we yeah. talking about Sean Stasiak again? <laughs> meat. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Um, anyways. <laughs> the table power slams were fantastic. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to go three for three. Mm-hmm. I was like, he's going to pick him up and put him through a third. Then he's going to take him up to the stage and put him through the one up there. <laughs> he he does that to Brock. And every then... single one of those tables, too. Like and they the, were the, clean. The, in the commentary booth, like the, the, the Punjabi announced team, yeah. uh, Funaki's announced, <laughs> announced team. Go down the international lines. Oh. <laughs> and they were clean slams, too. They oh, weren't yeah. They weren't mm-hmm. like, you know, 50-50s or anything. They were, he did not Strowman's have a... like, I got you, Brock. Don't, don't don't worry, big guy. Don't I'll worry. Keep you healthy for John Jones. <laughs> just It'll be just rah. fine. <laughs> I mean, even although, though although, and then, really although there's a little bit on John Jones. Uh-huh. John Jones kind of kind of is not in the running anymore. <laughs> what, what's up? Give her a mic. Give her a mic. We can't hear her. Nobody can hear you. Since our 205 Live correspondent's not here and the chat room is blowing up, he's a certified G and a bona fide stud. And he just showed up on 205 Live. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Injure yeah. your old tag team partner. When the superstar shakeup sends you to 205 Live. <laughs> He's got nothing to do now. That's right. Big Might Cass well. is looking to be out nine months. Oof. With Ooh. a torn ACL. Ooh. Ooh. Or M- uh, torn ACL. M- MCL. ACL. Hmm. Is it MCL or ACL? Um, well, from what I read, I don't think it's the official diagnosis. Yet. Maybe why I'll ask it. Dr. Maroon later today when it's I close. see him. <laughs> Um, what the hell were we just talking about? Oh, okay, so yeah, so Brock does, uh, Braun does the deal where he power slams him through the things. He picks up the steel steps. He bonks Joe, bonks Roman. He takes the steel steps. And, uh, yeah, he literally throws yeah. him 20 feet across into the ring. He almost like, threw he didn't them, have to do that. He almost he threw just, him over the ring. Yeah, I don't even think they used him again. Like, did they use, I guess they did use it again. Roman he just used them like, unsafely <clears throat> against his opponents. <laughs> What a hack. See, I see Brock use all these, all, or see, yeah, Brock and, and Braun swinging heavy machinery around and props and tables and stairs. <clears throat> Everything is good. Roman picks him up, cuts Brock in the head with it because he hits him at the, with a triangle of the steps, mm-hmm. and then, you know, almost cuts, well, he throws it to the outside and almost cuts 
Joe's legs off because the things are tumbling. Oh my god, that was scary. <laughs> and I'm like yeah. Roman. Come on, I got. Yeah, you're, you're, oh, Roman, you're you're not doing very well here. You're supposed to protect everybody here. <laughs> Look what Braun's put somebody through a table twice already and flipped one over top of him, and uh, you're cutting his head open with the st- with the <laughs> and stairs. He just keeps going, and and, and like. I, I just can't get over like how quickly just Braun just like clicked. Like he he has definitely figured it out. There there was yeah. I can't remember the exact moment during the match, but there was a moment during that match, um, just because maybe I've watched it two or three times already, where him and Roman kind of get crossed up in a little bit of a spot and instead of just standing there, Braun just kinda shoves him back into the corner and charges yeah. at him again and just takes control over again. I mean, he's not behaving at all like someone who's inexperienced. Like he's starting to get this. I mean, knows, I mean, I don't know anything about wrestling as far as the mechanics inside the ring, but I could tell with my eyes that this dude's <laughs> figuring it out. And that's the really scary part. Yeah. With He's his only eyes, getting better. He with knows, his eyes he knows what he needs to do. And yeah. he knows yeah. what he can do and what he does very well. And he's working it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Him and Brock, I, I'm actually it. Yeah. Give me, give me Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. I'm ready for it. Main event. Let's do it. It's happening. Let's do it. I'm, I'm excited. No mercy. It's, it's I can't believe they're doing away, it Five weeks away, but soon. like, I'm, I'm like, save this thing for mania. I'm ready for it. It's gonna so, be so great. I mean, well, okay, well, you know, that's interesting because No Mercy is gonna be at Staples Center, yeah, which usually is a big deal, and they'll yeah, be using Brock Lesnar yeah. there, even on the on the house shows. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I think No Mercy is kind of being slated to be kind of a bigger deal, and even look at that. Hell in the Cell is gonna be in Detroit. Also a big city for them. It's not in, you know, Pittsburgh. Idaho or something. Oh, or yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, we don't get that. We get a holiday tour. We um, get roadblock yeah. end of the line. Yeah, they yeah. sell a lot of Christmas merch down this area. So yeah, they do. I guess so. That yeah. in July. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They Christmas do like in July. That's Christmas in July. Yep, and then we get, usually get a week or two in front of uh, WrestleMania. Um, we, do. we do. But okay, so 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 it's not like SummerSlam all sucked. Or, you know, I think we can agree on that. There were some high points there, including the main event. But still, I think we're not shaking. We weren't shaking our head at SummerSlam going in as we usually do. Um, And we had, I mean, and I think that makes sense because we have mostly like guys that we saw on TakeOver the last three years Mm -hmm. in the mix. You know, AJ and Kevin Owens was good, right? Uh, We had Shinsuke Shinsuke and and Jinder, you know, like, Kind of expected to be kind of a throwaway match, but you know, still, you got Shinsuke and Gender on a pay per view at a SummerSlam for yeah. the WWE. Got to get Gender, you know. I get Gender. How am I supposed to go through my life without seeing Gender on and every main event? Of the even pay-per-view. even what even softened that in case like you didn't like that match or whatever. It wasn't the main event. No, 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 no. And it wasn't. No. It wasn't like it was a six match pay per view <clears throat> in which that was one of the keystones of SummerSlam. Like just that match, I mean, it was an important title match, but I thought it was it was average to above average. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't terrible. No. I didn't. I knew Jinder was going to win. I didn't think Nakamura was going to win. I was going to be actually surprised if Nakamura won. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Well, we got a big one with the uh, Hell in the Cell uh, coming up next, and we got a lot of time because uh, No Mercy's in five weeks, and then yeah. their their pay per views after that. Yeah. So we actually have a little bit of time to breathe here. Uh, Dave in the chat is saying, is uh, pointing out is a, is this the first at the new arena in Detroit too? So that might be a good point for for it something big yeah. happening at Hell in the Cell, Little Caesars Arena. Oh, is yeah, that, is shut that down seriously? the Joe last time? That they were is, just up there. That is the official. Oh, well, they said goodbye to the Joe. Well, they go through Detroit every two months. What the hell, yeah. Sorg? And now well, it's I mean, the, we're talking. This is like a new arena. October. We're talking about here. Yeah, I guess. It's a so ways. I mean, that's, this is a little bit away. Um, Little Caesars Arena. Uh, Mad Mike, Mad Mike <laughs> saying Braun is the be- is the best example of learning on the job he's seen since Kurt when he first came in, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah, oh. Braun didn't have that NXT run either. He just no, nope. he went from Rosebud to Wyatt family like yes, that. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did, and it worked out. I mean, sometimes with those big guys, it, do- it just doesn't work yeah, out. They didn't even well. feud with the Wyatt family. They were just like. Ray's Let's like, get you away I, from him. Ray's like, I release you of all Wyatt family stuff. obligations. <laughs> Go get them, Tiger. But, but you can still wear the same clothes you did before. Yeah, yeah. 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 No way yeah, else. But I'm going to need knows. the sheep mask. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but get a haircut. 
that, that's all we need. That's all I ask. Just get a haircut. That's fine. <laughs> there you go. So he's not. People aren't aren't just confusing him with, with bigger Luke Harper, um, <laughs> or even bigger Luke Harper. Uh, so that's a good question, Alex. Are you going to Staples Center for No Mercy? Mm-hmm. And I just saw some NXT out there. We need to correspond it. Um, speaking of which, I have to shout out because well, let's let, you know SmackDown and, and Raw kind of the follow this up. SmackDown definitely the better of the two. Uh, we had a lot of debuts uh, or re debuts in, in some case between Bobby mm-hmm. Roode, Shelton Benjamin, um, Dolph Ziggler showing up and just <laughs> making fun of everybody. Um, but I also enjoyed uh, speaking of Shinsuke Nakamura, just you know casually beating up on two individuals on tonight's show. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I got a kick out of that. Uh, but uh, but no, yeah, Bobby Roode up on the roster and looking good. Glorious. Glorious, you might say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I saw Bobby Roode. They, they bring up Bobby Roode, and I'm like, all right, it's Bobby Roode. Cool. Shelton Benjamin comes in, and I'm like, ain't no stopping me now. I'm freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> Shelton Benjamin showed up. I cut your... I cut your uh, Touch your webcam. All right, you're back. You're probably better. It's been a while. It's It's been been a while. It has been a while, and he's so much larger than (laughs) Chad Gable. So we'll we'll see how that works out. Um, It is kind of like, hey, yeah, I got rid of Jason Jordan, but I got you a new friend. (laughs) This this is gonna work. You think it's gonna work? I'm calling it right now. This is gonna work. All right. All right. We'll we'll see. Oh, we got you paused. We'll have to see what's going on there. All right. Oh, my little light went out. Your little light went out. Yeah. Oh no! I might have bumped it again. We'll have to fix that. We'll have to fix that here on the break. Uh, anyways, maybe you're back. No, oh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, anyways, before I crash the computer and we lose the entire first half of the show, I want to give it out to our friends. You know, there's been a lot of ads this week with the fashion police and a certain pizza company. They don't know. They don't know the real deal. I'm talking about the real deal now. Head Bob, D. Larry Brown. <laughs> Whoop. Thank you. Thank you, you for that. Kick your sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Slice on Broadway, our good friends supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Right here, up the line, in Broadway, along the tracks in the uh, Beachview neighborhood, as well as down at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates and Carnegie PA Main Street. Check them out. BGH underscore Slice on the Twitters. Let them know the Mayhem Show sent you if you're dropping by. And uh, thanks to them for supporting. Uh, I, I know Matt had to chomp on some pizza there if he was moving <laughs> at all in this webcam. If you can see know. me moving right now, my, I'd be eating pizza. There you go. That's his, he's, so, he's so happy in that shot because there's pizza right behind him and some of it is in his belly. All right. We'll be back with a big question and we're going to talk about some beach balls here on the Mayhem Show. We'll see you in a couple. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. This program, like, I'm not in a serious thing right now. Miss is like, God goof damn it, off. take me seriously. <laughs> when it's time to, when it's time to sell the, when it's time to get people into the building, I'll just do my Cena serious promo voice, and I'll yeah. be like, No, I'm done joking around, and we are going to talk about me Attitudes. versus. Bo Dallas at no mercy. Look, <laughs> hmm. the voices kit. Yeah, I, I got. I didn't read the Hello, whole article, Michael. but I was hoping it. Cena was going to be Michael Knight, and the voice of Kit was going to be Kevin Hart. What I was hoping was going to be. Oh. <laughs> Kit was going to be a wise cracking car. <laughs> Kit, what got into you? Uh, we are back, and then we're using that. Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're talking about John Cena, the <laughs> show title The Get Along Gang. So he's doing a lot of stuff with cars then. He's he is, yeah. Knight Rider, then Bumblebee, the mm-hmm. Bumblebee movie. If it's a car with a perhaps the soul of a living robot inside of it, Cena's there. John Cena's picking up that script. I'm seeing typecasting. <laughs> John Cena, the car. Mm. In the car. Well, he the did the video. Is he did the iPhone game too, right? Like the the ra- John Cena's racing car. He's, you know, he just did a commercial. He does like for... cars, right? Does he have a car collection? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a big car guy. Oh, yeah. He was. They showed a clip from that show that with the Bellas or whatever. Total something. Oh, he went like the big auction or whatever he, that deal he, is. Yeah, yeah, he was driving one of the 
Porsches he has or one of the muscle cars or something around. Ah, I they, lose track. I'm sure they, he does too. They show oh him in, in one of the one of the one of the John Cena DVDs where they like follow him over a WrestleMania weekend. Like he goes to some big major car auction thing yeah. and, and he's talking about all the cars and I think he gets one or something. John Cena is Lightning McQueen Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Cars for hustle, uh, loyalty, he's playing, and respect. That he's, needs to happen. he's obviously playing Mirage and Transformers. Um, yep. <laughs> wow. Uh, he's playing. He, he's also playing a bull. What and what? Herbie the Love Bug. <laughs> yeah, maybe John maybe Cena, Cena. Will, be, will be Kit. Uh, that, maybe that will work. So there's a discussion in the chat room. Well, Michael. the other chat room. We're on a new stream now. But uh, about Ring of Honor champions in WWE, and it definitely seems like those people are being recognized and being brought in pretty well. Uh, <laughs> wait, no, I have to follow this up. Uh, not to be outdone, Miz has a lead in the new directed DVD live action GoBots movie. <laughs> wow. Uh, is he but anyways, leader one is a easy leader one exactly. Side kill. Who oh. is he? Copter. Oh yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> Deep cuts, deep GoBot cuts. I'd run out of GoBot names. Oh man, there's no no more matter. Um, Tina Keys asks, she has a big question for us. Uh, there are currently nine former Ring of Honor World Champions in WWE. After Adams Adams Adam Cole's debut and takeover, who is another Ring of Honor champ that you would like to see in WWE? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can start. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jay Lethal. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. I think Jay Lethal could do some amazing stuff. Mm-hmm. Holy crap! The props on Deep Cuts go bots you guys from my mic, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, but no, Jay Lethal. I mean, he's been doing some really great stuff. He, I, he would. I don't know if he if he still qualifies for a two hundred five live, but even even that, I think it'd be great. You get him on a vegan diet, he could probably get down there where he needs to that be. That could be. <laughs> that could be. I know they were listing stuff before. I don't, I don't know if Austin Aries was was listed as a former champ that's that's involved now. Um, six man champ, technically a champion. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? Um, I will go to, um, and I've I know I've gone down this road before. I will answer Jay Briscoe, mm. um, and he's kind of always been my pick of. Kind of like a perfect ROH guy to come to WWE. It feels he's very... so mean. He's a... He portrays meanness so well. He's just it, it would be kind of like bringing in Samoa Joe. Like obviously their characters aren't exactly the same, but Joe just shows up. It doesn't matter what happened before or what happens after. Joe is just make just draws you in because he's just mean Samoa Joe. Same deal with Jay Briscoe. He's just mean Jay Briscoe from the chicken farm in Delaware, and he's just here to cause trouble. So yeah, he's a man. It's a great, great WWE character. Great guy. And not something they're unfamiliar with either. Yeah. What about you guys? Well, I'm going to be lazy and just and second Jay Lethal, but I'm going to put a caveat in there and say that uh, I want him to bring back Black Machismo. In so- <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> or, 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 or he could also do the Flair impersonation too. You know, or maybe he could bust out another one. You know, surely he's got more. Mm-mm. More imitations he can do. Does he have anybody who isn't dead or ill? Um, yeah, that, that's the challenge. Got to find yeah, one of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, some Hulk Hogan brother, <laughs> brother, brother. They, they could work Hogan back into the fold with that. There you yeah. go. There you go. Indeed. Who are you, Chad? Christopher Daniels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Due to history with Joe. And Styles. He's a guy that I could see them just dropping in NXT to do stuff like Cassius Ono is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But more interesting. I did see um, Cassius dropped a Kings of Wrestling reference to uh, Cesaro the other day on Twitter. Really? (laughs) Yep. Ooh, (laughs) rubbing their hands together. He did a Isn't uh, isn't Seamus going on a little bit of a holiday to to film a movie or something? Yes, he is. Oh, well, Sorgi's tag team partner, Sorgi. Well, KOW. Oof. Oh, we're not ready for that. Oof. No, <laughs> no, we are not ready. No, that. no, the world is not ready for that. Maybe, hey. Um, jeez. Uh, <laughs> from, ch- from the chat, uh, Tina saying, uh, he's leaving wrestling, but I'd like to see Davey Richards. Hey. Maybe Eddie Edwards is someone they uh, could work with and improve. Yeah, he got a. It's one of those guys that was always great. Like, 
Um, what was the Eddie Edwards and, and I think Roger Strong were ones I always confused back in the day. Like just on Ring of Honor before they really kind of broke out into separate things, right? You're not in your head too over there. I get them confused a lot. Mm-hmm. But well, then again, very often. <laughs> but then again, like a lot of guys in Ring of Honor kind of look the same for a good long time. Yeah, there's this era of Ring of Honor yeah. where they appear to all be identical. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. It's not so much anymore, but yeah, it was definitely a thing there for a minute. Yeah, definitely more. I mean, you know, we didn't have all these Dalton Castles and <laughs> Young Bucks and yeah. things like that. Uh, how about that young kid, Brian Danielson? <laughs> <laughs> think WWE could do anything with him? <laughs> nah. And Just probably no. put him in some talking head role and then waste him backstage <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know uh, any Ring of Honor champions you'd like to see come in. Um, there's not really a lot because Ring of Honor kind of holds on to their championships pretty long. No, so. Nobody said uh, the American Nightmare. Ooh. Does that count? Do we? I mean, he's been. If they've already been. Because if that's the case, I, I'd, I'd like to have CM Punk back, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, some guy named Phil. Yeah, uh, Kenny Omega. Just a hardworking kid from Chicago. <laughs> now we're just now we're just dropping wish lists of, te- of Kenny Omega, Dan Bandana. Uh, <laughs> Dan Bandana. <laughs> USA. In my mind, Dan Bandana and, and the French guy were just Daniel Bryan Renee filming Beret. something. Rene Beret. Uh, filming something in his spare room at home when he has some when he was just trying to entertain himself watching the new kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's just like I'm just gonna hang up this banner, dress in my old American Dragon. Uh, what was the American uh, the Luchador character he had? Because I feel like that's where that came from. I don't know. He was like, it was like a red, white, and blue Luchador. It's 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 on it's on his collection or something. From his like first match with um uh with the, all the rest of the graduates of Shawn Michaels School and like a dark match on SmackDown or Velocity or something. So I must have been Kendrick was, must have been there too then. Kendrick was there, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh Lance Cade, I think, was part of that. Mm-hmm. Lance Cade. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a deep cut. Just yeah. American Dragon. And apparently he was just American Dragon at Kaden that point. Murdoch. Caden mm-hmm. Murdoch, yeah. Oh Murdoch. Oh jeez. Um they were not in ROH, by the way. Neither of those guys. No, no, neither. <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope, 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 not at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Kelly Klein to boost the women's division in NXT. We're just wish list. Like I say, we're just wish listing Ring of Honor people at this point. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. I really hope one scene of Total Bella is is Brie, Brie walking in on Brian filming the Rene Beret stuff, <laughs> and they're being really confused. <laughs> Me too. All right, guys, like, let's talk. Hey, Chet. What's up, Chet? <laughs> Susan, um, I you got it. You you brought it up, so we have to just mention real quick that mm-hmm. they released another set of Southpaw regional wrestling videos, and this I can't. Glor- they're, uh, they're so funny. You know, the payoff wasn't quite as good this time. No, because the first mm-hmm. with the lethal leap year was too <laughs> yeah. funny, but. Yeah, that's Did no great. one look at a calendar. So <laughs> <laughs> ruin us. Yeah, I yeah, like like uh like he said with the uh the payoff wasn't as great, but boy, the build up was fantastic. Yeah. The uh the uh Chad Tubat and Tex Ferguson <laughs> spots were amazing. <laughs> Just so funny. When he when uh Gallows comes out of the corn <laughs> I found a place for necking. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. So funny. And then it was just like, get rid of the club and just have those guys do that. Yeah. And that's a good point. I don't know if you guys caught, but apparently, like, this Southpaw stuff takes place before right. the other stuff. That, that's why. Which I thought I was getting, yeah. getting, getting wind of that. That's why Czech, Tex, and Chad are still together, right? You're right. 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 Yeah, they're still together. And that explains why, like, you know, uh, he's not talking in the, in the next one. Mm-hmm. Can't wait for the 1981 season. If they just keep going backwards, yeah, <laughs> would be going. would would the be fantastic. And you do know. and do. Uh. <laughs> the only thing I'm sad about is uh, Rusev not popping up. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Was, so yeah. you know the I'll look, <laughs> Renee Young's accent doing Susan was like <laughs> insanely funny too. Well, Mr. Like, Dung. <laughs> It's dumb. <laughs> Mr. Dune. It's Dune. Uh, the um, 
um, what was it? the the Debbie the Destroyer? Or yeah. De- yeah. <laughs> Debbie Desperado. Like, Debbie Desperado. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I can't wait to beat that bitch I face. <laughs> like, what do you mean you just hired one? You have to hire two. Who's she going to wrestle? <laughs> you have you have to think these things out. You have to hire two of these people. And at the end, like, that was definitely looking for her opponent. There is definitely <laughs> that has definitely happened in some indie or something. That, no, 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 no. They hired one woman. That, that basically happened. happens in indie wrestling now, where you're like, "Hey, there's this one woman that works with us. Now we got to find a new one every month for her to work <laughs> uh-huh. with, and she's the de facto women's champion. You know who you are. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh, man. Shade, shade, shade. Oh man. But I mean, that's you know, that's kind of how it works because it's that one feature thing. You don't you don't build an entire division of women. You don't have just like I don't know four of them at your disposal that are there every show, and and uh, and and that's still how it goes. It is so <laughs> funny. That was one of the fun. As the first, one of the funniest points that I, I thought at. it was a t- <laughs> it was a shaping tiny man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, beach balls. Oh, I'm not talking about the women's balls. division in Southpaw Wrestling. <laughs> Top heels. Top heels this weekend. Apparently, the debate going on about the crowd, the Brooklyn crowd, and beach balls. Great fans. Great fans in Brooklyn. Great fans in Brooklyn is a, is your take. I mean, John Cena was put was was pretty much he's he's he was put he, he didn't put over Brandon. Uh, uh, what the hell? I almost called him Brandon Walker. Um, <laughs> Deep cuts, What's real this? deep. <laughs> Baron <laughs> Corbin, uh, <laughs> not even close. Get those guys mixed up, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, maybe after this weekend. Um, but uh, he did put over the wave on uh, Monday Night Raw uh, <laughs> a little bit. It's yeah. like he was powering up from from the wave. Yeah, yeah that that was a problem. Man, that, that's not a good thing. You think that's do. a problem? Yeah, that was a that's a mistake. Yeah, encouraging that kind of behavior by the fans i, I think thing. i think at a certain point it's like this is gonna happen it's brooklyn it's not anything we can do about it and i don't know maybe it's just because he was in yucks uh uh cena mode <laughs> as you guys have been enjoying Jokester cena. Jokester hikey, cena. Hikey, hikey. Mm-hmm. um yeah i think well i mean we've seen him like we after many of they've done the deal where they've shown like the wave on national television mm-hmm. not good no. don't do that Damn, and I, I think, and, and going back to the beach balls, I would venture to guess that Cesaro would like to have that move back where he went into the stands and grabbed the beach ball and ripped it apart. Because really, that only encourages them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, some of us do have kids, right? I, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. It's First a, rule of parenting. It's a double-bladed sword. Yeah. Because on one, on one thing I saw a couple people, were, I think Fitly, Fit Finley said, on Twitter, he was seconds away from going into the crowd and getting it. Mm-hmm. And then he saw Cesaro just leap the barricade and get it. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, well, good for Cesaro. And like, so I'm sure there's some people backstage who were like, great, no more beach balls, good. But then on the other hand, it was like, damn it. We fueled them. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I'm now sure. we have to ban beach balls tomorrow night. Yeah. Because I'm sure everyone get... else in the locker room was like, yes, get that beach ball, Cesaro, and kill yeah. it. But I'm sure the people in charge were like, I don't uh, know if that was the best yeah, idea. Like, yeah. I really like him doing it, but then I really wish he wouldn't have done it. <laughs> exactly. You know, you're caught in that. Like, yeah. Oh, man. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. Yeah, to yeah. be honest, I thought that beach ball was a plant because the camera followed Cesaro. Um, it was just that was my gut feeling, but maybe not um, when it first happened. But um, of course, now they can start selling beach balls and cha-ching. Mm-hmm. Well, there was <laughs> don't put Finn, it past Finn so Balor. Good. Finn Balor was tweeting a shirt uh, idea that was like his logo on a beach ball on mm-hmm. a T-shirt. <laughs> um, a beach ball club. With beach ball club. There you go. There you go. Uh, so I mean, it's still it's still kind of a discussion. Um, there were no, here's a, here's a point from Mad Mike who was at takeover. It says there were no beach balls during takeover. Then again, it wasn't sold out either. <gasps> NXT takeover didn't mm-hmm. sell out. Mm-hmm. Is that why? Well, you know, was that we why? did say it was underwhelming hey, card going in. Did, so. did, did, um, did anybody notice how takeover did not have 
the LED around the outside during the matches. It was a lot darker. You they're didn't get to see darker. the crowd. Do they always do that? I thought they still do the LEDs they always seem when they're like in the big ones. They're, it's, it's, I think it's here and there. But most of the time, it, their style is that, that yellow and black, and their crowds are generally just dark. Dark. Mm-hmm. Not dark as in like I can't see, but that's black with no no flash to it, no mm-hmm. no pomp and circumstance. So, and I think that that's the thing. I mean, that's kind of the attitude. Is like, hey, the show's in the ring. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I said on Mike's uh, Facebook, no, Twitter, one of those. <laughs> he talked about you. the crowd, and I said I think it's because um, you didn't see beach balls at NXT or any of that type of stuff. And it's not the product in the ring; it's the people in the arena. Because I can guarantee you, more people, if given the choice, the average fan is going to recognize with SummerSlam and Raw more than they would with NXT. Yeah, so more you're going to have a different. Absolutely, you know, you're going to have the mainstream or the the mom and dad who are going to be like, "Well, you're going to Raw," because mm-hmm. mom and dad only know Raw, and the kids mm-hmm. watch wrestling, so. Or I got you tickets to SummerSlam, or I got you tickets to Raw. Um, just not cl- NXT, where the kids are like, yeah, NXT. Oh, no, these guys. <laughs> not every kid is going like, to. I completely know who Adam Cole is. Some people yeah, don't yeah, have the not. network. Yeah, exactly. Some people don't have the network. Exactly. You know? um, just to clarify. Believe it or not. Clarify something with uh, Tina. She's saying about the LED was around the ring, or at least the one side. I'm talking about the LEDs, like the, the arena. How the house lights. Like, yeah, the house, yeah. like. You know that, that that band every arena has now, where the second, you know, yeah, you get the the, the the scrolling graphics coming around, yeah. man. Uh, sorry, we're getting my, my, my buddy from up the street is saying hi. Uh, <laughs> I, I was I, I stepped out of the street on the street the other day, and that guy was about half a block away yelling Hollywood Hogan at me. <laughs> so we're making friends in the neighborhood. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> this is what happens when we do this in public now. Um, but anyways, uh, no, I. I this is this is this is what you get after a weekend like this. You have that concentration of people, and they're gonna they're they're there for four days straight. Majority or big mass of them are there for all four shows. Damn Flyers fan! <laughs> like the Flyers fan, right? Get a life. He's got nowhere else to go. What am I supposed <laughs> to do? Go watch highlight videos from the last seasons? It's all just heartache after year. Well, at least again. he was an arena that somewhat wins. Within the last, I don't know, Somewhat. half decade, <laughs> I can't figure it out now. At least they oh, go to the geez. playoffs here and here and there. And this is a good point too. The LED for the stage completely went out during Rude's entrance as well. Hmm. Um. But anyways, no. This is I. I think. And it's, again, that's kind of the debate, right? Is 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 you know, are the fans kind of becoming? Uh, I think Marcus Mann had a big post where he was discussing um, how. Because of internet and and everything, fans want to be part of the show, and it's become kind of a problem, right? Yeah, you get like the um, the fans who want to act like I don't know the the, the, the smark the smart mm-hmm. fans mm-hmm. the smart ass fans. You hear them at the you indie know? shows too. Yeah, right? you see them at the yeah. indie shows too. Like I, I mean, I wish more fans were like you and I, Sorg. You know, where we go to a show, we're pretty much. We'll, we'll go along with whatever we're getting because it's just fun to be at the show and then cheer for the guys you're supposed to cheer with. But there's always those guys who want to who want to go against the grain. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, I don't, you know, I mean, there's definitely this school of thought where like, well, you paid for your ticket, you can do whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. But I think there's also, you know, it, it's a little different with um with wrestling because you're almost an extra. You know, in the show, and in, in, yeah. you know, you're yeah. you're allowed to. I mean, you can go one way or another if you want to, but when you're, I think when you're crossing that line where you're being disrespectful to the people who are out there in the ring or pretending that you have some sort of connection to them that doesn't really exist, then that becomes a problem. So that's where the beach balls are a problem, and some of the name calling and the cat yeah. calling that gets a little personal, gets mm-hmm. a little bad. Mm-hmm. Especially on the indie shows. Especially on the indie Especially shows. Especially on the indie shows where you can hear that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> Um, Tina, Tina kind of reinforcing, uh, her son enjoys going to the main shows rather than the NXT, um, the, rather than when NXT came there two times, um, where she's in the, uh, uh, Northwest out there. Um, 
And of course, NXT sold out very quickly here. NXT hasn't been here in Pittsburgh for a good while either. For sure, that sold out immediately twice in a row. Yeah, like they haven't been here for like over a year. I, well, I think some of their more recent tours, they've kind of been establishing new loops. You know, right, right. Other absolutely. parts of the country, they're, they're kind of filling out new stuff. Eventually, eventually, definitely. Um, Do you think it's up to? Um, us as fans to police other fans or like how like where do you feel like it's time to step in and maybe correct an, a fellow fan I've, I've had shows where i've been at where i've left the show and kind of thought to myself you know if i'm at another show and someone like that is behind me i'm probably going to say something because yeah especially if it's something where language is a problem you yeah. know we we we, uh, we i think what a few of us discussed um after like last month's iwc show there was somebody there from a city paper and they talked about the language issues and I even, you know, at ringside this time, somebody said, you know, you know, we suck a dick or something like at ringside. And I kind of wish I was on that side to say, hey, eh, kind of cut it off on that. Right. Um, and I know especially were, when they go like with, with IWC, they go to so much trouble to make that a family friendly kind of. They do. Okay. Yeah, they try to keep yeah. it at least PG-13. They try. Sort. They try. Um, There's some people that get on the mic and are in certain positions and definitely drop a few words mm-hmm. last show. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not something that, you know, other groups that just kind of fly it around. Right. And then and they are, they do want to mostly be a family friendly thing, but also I'm talking about a show that has tax and blood and cages. So, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> you're, it, it kind of depends on, on, on where you're looking All at that. normal stuff. Yeah, all normal. Well, blood's stuff always family. been well. Yeah, it used yeah, to be part exactly. of wrestling. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and I don't know. Um, it, it, Mike has a good comment here too. Um, I was trying to get to is, is so someone trying to throw a beach view, beach ball uh, during a boring baseball game, they get kicked kicked out of the stadium. And I think I and I think that's one thing. So so there's that, and one that can be d- disruptive to the game itself if that goes out in the field, right? So, so that's the that's a logistical and a liability thing there. Um, you can say the same thing for the wrestling. Beach ball goes in, screws somebody up. They fall off the ropes. They hurt themselves. That's that's also they're completely within right to confiscate beach balls as far as that goes. Um, but also, just had a, you know a lot of discussion with an upcoming indie mayhem show with Magnum CK about theater and pro wrestling. You're not going to throw a beach ball, <laughs> or be disrupt or cheer for the bad guy. <laughs> In a theater production, right? <laughs> and I know we're kind of crossing over a little bit between sports and theater, and and I don't know if my answer is really in this analogy, uh, but it, it is kind of something to think about. You're going to see a show in a presentation, right? So, uh, Matt, you definitely have well, a response I was, to that. I, I went to the theater recently. <laughs> and I you saw all the beach balls, I, and you cheered I, for the... Yeah, the I did, and I cheered for the heels. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you cheered for the the... the, the, the I'm trying to think of a play with bad guys. I, I, I went to see Newsies, believe it good. or not. Good. All only one I could think of was one with Nazis, and I didn't want to get into that conversation. <laughs> the Sound of Music? No, 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 oh. no, no. The one with they were they're hiding, and she had a diary. And Frank. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. All right. <laughs> Thanks for, you know. Oh, good. They found her. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, that's not good. Um, no. She's upstairs. Anyway, um, so I went to the, I don't, I don't go to the theater very often unless you count the wrestling. Um, so, but, but when I was at the theater, you kind of got the, you could tell there were the regulars, you know, the theater regulars. And that's kind of why I asked, you know, what role do the fans have in kind of policing one another? Because yeah. you could tell just like one wrong look, you know, don't have your cell phone on here. Make sure your thing's turned off. Don't have that screen on because then the light will be shining. It'll be distracting people. They can't pay attention to the play with a little screen over here, you know, like being at the movies, right? Yeah, you, know, yeah. you wouldn't want yeah. that. Um, and you could definitely sense that there was the, um, you know, there were the regulars kind of there keeping an eye on, you know, don't mess looking with at her. you like you. I've never seen you before. I'm keeping my eye on you. And <laughs> if you make here. one uh-huh. wrong move, I'm calling that usher over here and you're going to get, you know, yeah. no re-entry. Okay. Yeah. So, so the, there's isn't, that. Isn't wrestling, they, you walk in with the, with the predetermined mindset of I am going to interact and I am going to be interacted with mm-hmm. for, um, you know, starting chance mm-hmm. or they expect the crowd to react and cheer and hold signs and be mm-hmm. part of the show more so than a play would. Uh, well, some, I mean, now, some plays do. They'll yeah. ask for audience mm-hmm. participation. But at a wrestling show, you almost go in thinking like, 
hey, is my sign going to get on TV? Mm -hmm. Uh, is, is the Miz going to point at me and, you know, and boo me? Or am I going to upset him if is, we start a chant? Can is I Ric him? Flair going to call me the fat guy in the front row? Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah. yeah is, is the rock going to come out and say, you know, whatever stuff, stuff like that. Like the old school, like stone cold, you know, give me a hell. Yeah. Right. And everyone's like, the guy in the theater is not going <laughs> to, well, I mean, I will say, like, during the musical, at, at the musical, there definitely me, were, there, there were points during the show where, you know, the, the, the you know, there would be applause from the audience because yeah. they had, like, hit some point where, like, I don't know, they all got into a row and they were all in sync and everyone was like, ah, yeah. you know, and they're all yeah. clapping. And I'm like, oh, really? I thought we were just supposed to, like, wait till the song was over and then we all clap. But, like, there were points where, you know, the There's... people who go to these things a lot kind of knew, like, yeah, yeah, we pop for that. You know, yeah. that's the yeah. high spot. You know, seriously, <laughs> you know? And being, I've been some, when I was in high school, I was in some uh, high school musicals. And we were told, like, if the crowd starts clapping during dialogue or something, wait. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And not mid-sentence. Don't stop mid-sentence. But, like, finish. But wait for the applause to be done. Kind of like, and the, then sit go like a sitcom. Kind yeah, of, like, yeah. enjoy the, take that Stare in. Stare longingly out of the crowd them. like Hogan and kind of milk it for, like, yeah. 10 now, minutes or so. Now, <laughs> This, yeah, this, this, up the... <laughs> this group has been known for their interactions at wrestling shows, and it was brought up by by producer Missy, reminding us, Chad, you you are amongst our crew that have... we went to some shows and we had some interactions. With I have people. no history of <laughs> altering <laughs> I, any fan man, participation. I mean, in I any mean, in the events at a certain for... point. A year or so. <laughs> <laughs> At a certain point, you know, there's a local pro wrestler here named Dennis Gregory, and we talked about it, long time <laughs> fans know, and and for some reason we decided, or Chad decided, yeah, that uh, we were going to chant "bum." He was a bum, and and there was there's three or four of us, and oh, Danny, great guy, uh, you know, I like, may awesome. I may have destroyed anything <laughs> he had going for a year. Yeah, because yeah, I would yeah, go yeah. to any of the shows he was at and just call him a bum. He was a bad guy, to be fair. And chant bum. Yeah, and other people would join me. Dude, and in fact, later on in that year, I went to a show and I didn't chant bum, mm -hmm. and the bum chant started anyway. <laughs> and I just sat back and I just like sort of like looking at me, and I just sat back like. And at a certain point, look at this. Well, well, there was also <laughs> things like you go and you get a soda, right, and and you drink it, and then we decided to. You know, I don't know if this is something you came up with that, that we put our spare change. I put change in the thing and rattled it at him. Yeah, <laughs> and at at, uh, at base brawl, it was like it was. Change. It was a thing we did for several shows. I threw change at him at his feet and to told him told him to go back to his park bench <laughs> via the via the bus, no, and wait, I said, like, "Here's some change," which what? he smartly countered with. Don't throw a month of your pay at me. <laughs> I was like, touche, touche. <laughs> now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. But I did. What throw, about like, Dennis Gregory? Out. Made you think he was a bum? Like, I, I mean, I, I see. I, I, he was a bad guy. He was a heel, and yeah. I think he did something heelish in one of the shows. And you know, sometimes you just go, that guy's a bum. <laughs> so I was just like, you know what, Dennis Gregory, you're a bum. And, and, and to be fair, you well, threw it. it you threw it at his feet. Yeah, not at him. No, not no. I didn't strike him. I threw it at his feet, so he'd have to pick it up. And and, and I don't think we had guardrails back then. No, this was this was at the outdoor, another outdoor show. It was outdoor shows, but so even, even was, the uh, even the, the the guardrails didn't come for much later for for IWC. Yeah. Um. So you know that is a pretty. Yeah, but remember, I know I I wasn't the only one who had fan interactions. Remember, I remember some people telling you the Gambinos to move stuff. <laughs> Somebody brought up a picture of that recently, actually. <laughs> Anytime the Gambinos were in the ring, people would stand up and say, Hey, Gambinos, move this. And there would be four of us at a time. Right? And you just do the, the arm movement. You know, the, they were if you're the, on audio, the arm, you know. Yeah, the, the arm. The, what yeah. do you call it? Flipping the bird. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, without the bird because it's a the family Gambino show. They were the moving company. Yes. Was, they had that front. That was there, their front. There's a picture that surfaced about a month ago, and I think it was a bass brawl, and Marshall's looking at me, and I still got the long hair and everything and, and the extra 30 pounds, and, uh, and, and I'm doing the move this, mm -hmm. and I don't know if we made an image out of it or something. But, uh, like, he shared it. Like, I think yeah. Marshall shared it, actually. <laughs> so, and this is like, Ten years ago, we so. accidentally changed IWC. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Whether we had this show or not, or it didn't matter. No, no, no. It had nothing to do with this podcast. It was just a, what how we interacted at wrestling. Shows. I used to yell. See, I don't think I used there's to yell any harm in like heckling the heels. Like no, you know, no, no, like that. That's that, like you. I, I don't know if I, you altered booking for the <laughs> or altered the course of IWC history, but that, I mean, to me, that, there's no harm in that. Yeah, yeah. If nothing, if nothing else, that that helps, especially if they're out there looking for a reaction. Yeah, yeah I if thought Denny's that good that he can get, you know come back without you. With I, it, I had is, to so. give him. Yeah, I I said I, he was my mortal enemy for like <laughs> six months. I, I was just remember. like that Dennis First Gregory. Time, oh boy. When we all went to New York City and you kept finding like places that, that obviously really... the homeless were, were sleeping in Central Park and we did video of him saying, Look, I found Dennis Gregory's bed. <laughs> I wrote Dennis Gregory is a bum on a homeless guy's bed. <laughs> <laughs> Some Why dude was sleeping that? on that. Because I said it was Dennis Gregory's bed. And I wrote I wrote Dennis Gregory's bed. And I wrote bum on it. I was probably it was daylight, so we were okay. It was okay. <laughs> yeah, we're we not were okay. we're not trolling through a nighttime in Central Park. No, it was daylight, middle of the day in the winter, <laughs> so we were safe. I mean, it was the we same trip where where we found it. We were looking. Dave was looking for the Rat King in a sewer <laughs> uh, yeah. manhole, trying to lift a manhole cover, which he, is, we which we did. discovered is impossible uh, for one person. What? <laughs> Yeah, so the, yeah, hey. so <laughs> the crowd's going to be crazy. Yeah, the crowd, the yeah, 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 or yeah. regular yeah. beach balls or laser pointers. Oof! Or yeah, how many laser pointers do you see anymore? Though they've, yeah, they've, they've gotten those out of the thing. If they wanted on. beach balls gone, they would be gone. Yeah, actually. So in a so way, you got to say that they just like many, so many other things. WWE has done this. To how themselves. many signs do you really see nowadays? Uh, yeah, compared to mm-hmm. back when uh, sign heyday. Yeah, you don't see you ninety-five don't see or many. ninety-six Raws, and, and I don't know about there anywhere are no else. People, there were only signs. Yeah, I, was just, I just remember signs everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I remember when um, we went to Royal Rumble in New York. I think that same trip. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Everybody that came in our entrance had their sign confiscated and thrown away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And but there were definitely signs at that Royal Rumble. It was weird. It's just they said, "Hey, we're going to lift the amount of signs by just throwing away everything that comes in the store." Or yeah, something. I, I don't know. Interesting. That was years ago. Yeah, that was uh, that was the one where John Cena came back out of nowhere, and yeah. and we had Edge and Edge and uh, Edge and Ray Mysterio, Edge and Ray Mysterio for the belt, and and the uh, yeah. crowd did not like Ray Mysterio. No, they did not. That was my crowd. Welcome. <laughs> they started booing Ray Mysterio. Went, oh my, what's this? Any crowd that boos Ray Mysterio is a bad crowd. Sorg. New York City, baby. Madison, Madison Square, Square City. Madison Square Garden crowd. <laughs> now, they're they're pro Edge. Edge. They're okay with me. Now, <laughs> now it's beach balls. Then it was booing Ray Mysterio. But poor they, baby Ray Mysterio. What will they think of next? They no, did boo John fans. Cena when he came out too. So, Chad, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, well, uh, I learned that those. I learned that nothing can beat a good heavyweight title match. 305 Live. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was good. It was good. And uh, I like Brock winning. I'm okay with it. I, I, I'm a big Brock fan since day one. So part-timer, full-timer, I don't care. All-timer. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> fine with me. But uh, that match was great. I didn't think I could, I could love those dudes just going at each other for like they did and that was just great i really enjoyed it so good greg what'd you learn from wrestling this week mm, i learned i love me some southpaw well i already knew that but i love it more now that there's more and um i will continue binge watching it over and over and i won't get sick of it i hope there you go, and, and, and I'm getting this urge to eat at KFC. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, that's another thing. HB KFC, that, that, that was kind of a show stealer there. Show, I don't know, show stopper, you might say. Good, good for WWE for using the talent they have in these commercials. That's right. HBK looked like he could still go. Yes, he did. He looked, he looked pretty darn good. <laughs> he he came like, out. I'm like, I think he's coming out the wrestle. It looks like he was he was out ready to choke some chicken. They made him shave his beard for that. <laughs> there you go. Poor <laughs> guy. Yeah. Jeez. Um, uh, Matt, 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 what did, what did you learn? 
Uh, yeah, I learned that um, Asuka is really good at hiding an injury because I had no idea watching her match uh, at TakeOver that she was in any kind of trouble. Mm. Later, I found out, oh, yeah, she broke her collarbone. <laughs> oh, true. Very true. Jeez. Um, so it's going to be all right. It's just six to eight weeks, so that's okay. And nobody beats Asuka. You hear me? Nobody, nobody. beats Asuka ever. Man, Mike learned that uh, he is never going to doubt a takeover again, and there ain't no stomping SmackDown. Nah. No way, man. Jeez. Jeez. SmackDown. When, like, I kind of want SmackDown to have a third hour at this point because, you know, everybody wants to do shit next week. So, yeah. Um, it was so good. Wow. Um, I learned that four cage matches is not too many for a show. <laughs> Because it was the right amount, um, I really enjoyed my uh, experiencing at ringside and, and, and editing today uh, that show. Um, it was it was pretty fantastic. Um, and and oh, there's something else. There is something else from there. Um, and also weird that when I saw a bag that I should have known was thumbtacks, I expected it was army men because that's what I saw last time I saw a bag like that uh, <laughs> at Rise a few weeks ago. Uh, so, hey, you got me there, and that was completely thumbtacks. Um, so, that's what I learned this week. Um, and I think we have everybody from in here. Thank you, everybody, for responding, because I've been kind of the, as our sort of, sort of show recaps, I've been asking what you learned from SummerSlam Raw, and uh, thank you, everybody, that's been responding to that and getting the conversation going with it. Um, so, uh, thanks for that, guys, and uh, thanks. Hey, Grego, joining us here. In oh, 501st. Thanks so much for having me. Tell people where they can go find out about uh, the organizations again. Um, well, if you would like to join like I do and uh, um, do, chari- do charity work dressed up as um, a Star Wars character, go to 501st.com or rebellegion.com and you can learn more. There you go. But you don't have to take my word for it. Do-do. Chad the Shad on the Twitter. At Chad the Shad. We, yes, at Chad the Chat. Thank <laughs> that, you. That's my on the Twitters. Mainstream Matt. One T. Thanks, Thor. Tweet him anytime you don't like how the morning news goes. Yeah, or your technical complaints about the quality of the nightly sports call. <laughs> that he has nothing to do with. Not Quality's good. I just wanted to know why it looked like that. <laughs> I'll get that I'll get that taken care of for you right away. Okay, right away. Request. <laughs> I'm gonna you're, go in there right now. You're the uh, the the. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, go to work right now, so I get the that new, fixed. You're the news channel three one one. Submit a exactly. ticket. Exactly. I even told my girl, I'm like, uh, I can actually ask someone who might be able to give me a response on why it actually looks like this. <laughs> so I was like, next time I see him, I'll just ask him if they use different cameras. If it's just, what what would cause this? There you go. A little bit of everything. And we're still going to try on the Twitter. Thank you, Riz. Riz plays games. Go look it up on the Twitch and the YouTube channels. He's doing a lot of great things with video games. He cut out a little earlier because Riz, Riz got to recover. Riz got to get his sleep. Gotta He's got to get his beauty rest. He's got to reboot mm-hmm. his, the Xbox of his mind so he can uh, get to all the gaming goodness. Thank you, producer Missy on the ones and twos. Keeping things straight. Making sure the chat. Oh, everybody. So there we go. There you go. Off camera. Actually, well, I thought that was your shoulder. But that's not what you're wearing. <laughs> I think it's a jacket on the back of your shirt. Yeah, that, that's it. That's that's messing with me. There you go. Uh, thank you to our chat room, uh, hanging with us all night uh, on the mayhem. Uh, and stay tuned. We're going to be talking to Jack Pollock, uh, who who received a lot of those tacks in his back um, mm-hmm. this weekend. Um, tomorrow, I think it's 8 p.m. Um, Eastern time on the live feed on our Facebook page. And we have a whole bunch of uh, great guys uh, lined up in the coming weeks, including Locked and Loaded, who just showed up, debuted, and won their uh, first uh, tag team championships with the IWC this weekend. Um, and we had them way before we even know. And oh, hey, yeah, wait, wait, there's there's Jack this Pollock guy. right there okay. in the middle. We can get his okay. autograph yep. so he can complete the set. Okay. The guys are coming in. We're going to do a Canadian Thanksgiving special edition with that crew. That's the word. <laughs> so, looking forward to that. I have to figure out when the hell Canadian Thanksgiving is. Uh, of course, check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Until next time, Mayhem out.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.